The basic idea is he blew it, and what he needed was microeconomics. People inside and outside Apple argued in favor of external app developers. Jobs brushed them off. Jobs needed microeconomics. What did he need? Uh, he needed to realize that the battle over the worldwide smartphone industry was not about the product. The product was gorgeous. Steve Jobs was famous for that. He built this beautiful device, and he wanted to control it too tightly. And his colleagues on the board and inside the company had to convince him over the course of a year to open up the app store for outside developers and turn it from a product war into a platform war. And once that happened, Apple defined the terms and won that battle. And you get, a, you get why is this in a technology book? Are you kidding me? It's a Marshallian supply and Look at that, Peter Hooper. It's an outrage. Are you teaching this book at Sloan? We are, absolutely. In, in fact, we were teaching this book at Sloan before we finished writing it because we use our students as the beta testers. They were telling us what works, what doesn't work, what's clear, what's not clear, and we did that before we delivered it to the rest of the world. But you have to understand Eric. supply and demand curves if you're going to succeed in this world that combines super powerful technology and Econ 101. Yeah, okay. Let's bring in Francine, please. Yeah, Eric, what is one thing that we misunderstand about digital and our future in it? Say that again, sorry. What is the one thing we misunderstand that people get wrong, whether we think there are too many jobs being replaced? Is there something that people think and assume that is completely wrong when it comes to digital? Well, the core thing is that I think people massively underestimate this wave of technology that's just starting right now, and they uh, overestimate our ability to adapt to it. That The bottleneck is that we haven't uh, changed our business models, we haven't changed the way we're making our decision-making, and as a result, there's this growing gap. We're trying to tighten that gap a lot with some of the models that we present in the book. Right, but Andrew, isn't this what disruptors do? That we wouldn't uh, necessarily assume that it's the old companies that need to survive. That's why the new guys are coming in, giving us innovation. That, that's exactly right. And when there's a, a technology change this big, very often the incumbent economy doesn't get it. The successful companies don't make the transition very well. One of the reasons we wrote this book was to try to give a playbook not only to the startups and the disruptors, but to the incumbents yeah. as well and even the playing field.